All right. Uh, let's talk about Urban Wrestling Federation Thug Assassins. That was the name of this show. It was. And you hear that and you think, what does that mean? That's kind of nonsensical and random. Wrong. Here is how the show opened. This was unique. This was unique. They showed clips from the last show of Rashi Brown winning the UWF Street King Championship. Yes. They showed security camera footage of Brown giving the title belt to someone. Uh, the graphic said this was several hours after the show. Then they showed Rashi Brown walking up a stairway and walking down a hallway. <laughs> then he got jumped by two dudes in hoodies. Two thugs. They were, in fact, thugs. Two thugs in hoodies. This was, uh, so far, this is largely standard wrestling fare. They beat him. They laid him out. They stomped on him for a while. And then something new happened. <laughs> something I have not seen on a wrestling show before. Wrong, actually. Well, not this exact thing, but go on. They pulled out pistols, firearms, and they shot him in the head from point blank range several times, and then they ran away. Yes. Rashi Brown was just shot apparently to death here on this paper. Apparently, they put a gun by his temple and shot five times. The dude's dead. Yes. They killed Rashi Brown. <laughs> they murdered him. That is the end of him in the UWF. They put him down. See, what well, you don't understand, Vinny, because you don't pay attention to these shows, is Rashi Brown is hardly the first man to be assassinated. Several characters have been killed off. Don't you remember on that one show when, like, uh, Low Life Louie put the bag over that fella's head and, and, uh, and, and uh, killed him? It's like at the end of the show. I remember the I, I remember the bag over the head. I don't realize that man was deceased. He's dead. You can't mess around in the UWF, Vinny. I was not aware these men were dying left and right. They'll take you out. So yes, Rashi Brown is dead. What does that mean for the title? <laughs> well, yes, that's we, the important question. We found. Here. We soon found out. So, after recapping, nay, displaying a murder, the end of a man's life. Well, presumably. I you mean, just said. Well, you weren't sure. After this, they just went to the ring for a promo. Yeah. Bunch of guys came out like nothing out of the ordinary was happening. Well, they, because the murder happened at the end of the last pay-per-view, basically. So they've had two months to, to mourn. But, okay. <laughs> no one cared that Rashi well, Brown this was, was this wasn't No his... one cared. Well, the key was the, the crew that came out was, was glad the fellow was dead, because then they took control of the title. They had the belt. Yep. They came out. Guess what they were after? Tell that me. money. Yep. That money. Well, and and uh, and bitches. Most of them, I had no idea what they said. There was a big dude named named Slim, mm -hmm. S L Y M M, which I think would be slime. But anyway, <laughs> he he declared no e. he declared himself the new champion. Yep, Beast Ortiz, which I love as a name, by the way. Yes, Beast Ortiz was watching from the rafters. Somebody in here was named T Mizzle. Everyone was talking shit to each other we couldn't hear. There was a security guard there with a sweet-ass mullet. One of the fellas from Atlas Security back in the 90s, ECW. Yeah. And uh, this security guard proceeded to not do his job as Slim grabbed a fan, dragged him out of the crowd into the ring, and laid him out with a spinning slam. At this point, Uncle, Uncle Murder's crew came out. Slick Wagner Brown said he wanted the title, that money, and bitches. There's consistency here in the UWF. Don't we all? Somehow, in the rafters, Beast Ortiz got his hands on the mic. Even with a microphone, I still couldn't hear anything he said. He uh, declared he was going to whip Slick Wagner Brown's ass. They fought for 15 seconds, and then at least four men hit the ring. Quite possibly more. Well, they were so big. There are two of them. There was only one man. <laughs> it may have been one man. It seemed like four. Two of these men were apparently a tag team known as the Fat Pack. This, I swear to God, is my new favorite tag team. I would. You know how much money? It's not I would just pay? the one guy. You know how much money? Well, that's true. Big Baby Daddy, <laughs> who is so fat 
How fat was he, Vince? Minimum 450. This man is like unbelievably, gigantically fat. But he hits the ring. He beats on dudes. And then he goes outside. If you've ever watched any of my matches, I have a move that I do that Eddie Guerrero stole from me. It's where you stand on the outside and you grab the ropes from the apron and you do a, uh, a, a uh, you take the ropes and I don't even know what it's called. You do a slingshot. A slingshot senton. You do a somersault onto the man and you called it a helo. Yeah, slingshot senton is essentially what it is. The loser term, yes. But uh, this, this, this fatty, big baby daddy, he laid this dude out, he went to the apron, and he grabbed the ropes, and I thought, no. No! No! In fact, in fact, Big Baby Daddy did what I believe, I'm not sure, a Slingshot sent on onto his opponent. <laughs> that's what he was trying to do. I'm certain that's what he was trying to he do. He made it over the ropes. Here is what he did. <laughs> what he really did. <laughs> Here is what he actually did. Rather than grab the ropes and jump over them, he basically pushed the ropes down till they were under his belly. Yes. Then he leaned forward and he kind of. <laughs> Teeter tottered on top of them for a while, and he inched little, leaned a little more forward, and a little more forward, inch by inch, inch by inch, until finally his center of gravity was no longer over his base of support, and he immediately came crashing down to earth like a comet. <laughs> yes, yes, this dinosaurs were killed the during this spot. Fucking thing ever. Somehow in this, like his leg grazed the guy. And they Grazed! Came. That's what he was trying to do. He landed with both legs on this man. <laughs> and by the way, when Vinny tells you what happened, he is making it far more dramatic than it was because the actual splot, spot, a splot actually is this, a is a this was a splot. Term. This was a splot. <laughs> this was a splot. The splot took a split second. <laughs> he pushed down. He leaned forward, and bam! Oh God. This man got hit so hard that his legs went one direction and his torso went the other. This was more of a murder than when the thugs <laughs> shot Rashi Brown at point blank range. In the head. Yeah. I probably would sooner take that than the hey, bullet. senton that Big Baby Daddy performed in this particular, uh, I can't even, I don't even know what this was. It wasn't a match. A segment. Yeah. Happy John Sandwich. All right, then we got the absolute worst thing in the world, a UWF backstage segment. They do about 50 of these in every show, and they're all the same. There's a bunch of guys. They throw up either no graphics or a dozen graphics in 10 seconds, so you still have no idea who, who, who anyone is. Hey, at least they got graphics. They all mumble to each other. They're You never understand two-thirds of it, and uh, one-third you do understand it's all the same thing. They all want that money. They're all worried about respect and bitches. It's the same promo over and over again. It always sucks. And it's always edited badly. This one, there was like two of them. There was uh, I'm sorry, that one comes later. This one was just the Fat Pack and their crew celebrating backstage. They had a conversation I could not hear or understand. And then one of the guys who was in this conversation, I don't know who he was, I don't know why, but the fat pack suddenly turned and beat the holy living fuck out of him. Well. There was Cleverin. Big Baby Daddy hit him with the hardest clothesline. <laughs> but then he cannot throw a, a kick because he's too fat. Because throwing a kick requires you to stand on one leg. Yeah. Which is very difficult when you're, when you're Big Baby Daddy. He's still my favorite wrestler. He did. Uh, oh, I know you, what I was going to say. Hold it, on. This is all right. Before we go any further, I meant to say this about 10 minutes ago. I can't even tell you the amount of money that I would pay to see the fat pack against the Briscoes in a feud. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the best feud ever. Have you seen the intro video on the Briscoe Brothers new site? I haven't. Briscoe-brothers.com. Oh, no. You should. You, you can play it. I'll I'm go sure, look at it. They'll be thrilled to have it. 
So, uh, yeah, they, they killed this guy for whatever reason. Then 40 Glock and someone else had a conversation in a car. Something about tightening screws. Fat Pack revealed that the guy they had just beat the fuck out of, they stole his shoes and his weed. And his wallet. And their, their posse wanted the shoes and the weed, but didn't care about the wallet. Uncle Murda told Slick Wagner Brown he needed to handle his business. Said he needed winners. Five random men met in an alley, and I guess they made a match for later. later. And then Uncle Murda talked more about money and bitches. These segments... Infuriate is too strong a word, but they make me angry. They could be better. Yeah! <laughs> but you know, I will say this. I did watch this show twice, and, and I actually kind of know what's going on after watching it twice. But I should know what's going on after watching it once. That's the problem. I uh, used to watch Lucha every week, and I, under- I understood those promos a thousand times better, and they were in goddamn Spanish. Well, you could... A language you could, I do not speak. You could hear them. That's the problem with this show, is, yes! is oftentimes you can't actually hear what That is saying. my point. Well, you know, here's... I don't think part of the problem is. It's a roster full of mumblers. Yeah! <laughs> so tell these we're guys... Not, we're not disagreeing here. I, I think they need to put a, uh, uh, a wireless mic on all these fellas. I think that, that'd uh, make things a lot better. And if they do have one on, they need to turn up the volume. And I'll tell you another one. I'll tell you another one that I actually know from experience... Because I, I I did some some uh, some of those uh, student films, the Seattle Film Institute films, about six seven years ago. Never film outside in traffic. Mm, yeah, excellent point. Because you can't hear. I once the, the it was actually like the final scene of the film. It's like the most important scene, and they decided they were going to film it outside. But it's like not only a sound stage or anything. Like we were legit outside on a street corner, so like you couldn't hear me. And then you couldn't go back and fix it, and you couldn't edit it because it screwed up because of the street noise you had in the background. So never film outside on a busy street. It just doesn't work. All right, we had G's versus Famous B. G's is a... Short. (laughs) Maybe 170, somewhere around there. One of the announcers, the, I, I will say that the announcers on the show are far and away the best part of it. Oh, yeah. They're the best announcers in wrestling, I think. Well, besides Mark Henry. That's true. But Who, by the way, would be awesome I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> One of the announcers claimed that G's had deadlifted 675 pounds in preparation for this match. Yeah. Awesome. He knew he had a match with Famous B, <laughs> and so he decided, well... I should go to the gym and deadlift 675 pounds. Yes. That's his preparation. Yes. I spoke to Jesus this morning. He told me that he deadlifted 675 pounds what? in preparation for this match tonight. How so much? this motherfucker ain't playing around 675 pounds. Come this on, man this cat deadlifted. is so sure he can do push-ups underneath my door. Come on, dude. <laughs> A third of I a figure, ton. I figure he's so short that, that, uh, that he didn't actually lift the weight when he stood up. That's how he accomplished this feat. I see. Yeah. So, uh, G's is really good. Famous B at some points looked uh, pretty green. At some points, he actually looked really awesome. Uh, when uh, he got lost in a high spot and he failed to catch G's in a dive. But then when it was his time to go on offense, he was doing these really swank uh, rolls off the ropes and some great lucha spots. They did the funniest, scariest, and the most brutal apron DDT spot of all time. Famous B knows lots of ways to take bumps on his head and have it be funny. Uh, they did do uh, the, the the indie gimmick where you hit a thousand finishers and kick out of them. And then finally, G's won with uh, a foot stop, a foot stomp to Famous B while Famous B was standing up and bent over. Like when Cena does, Cena does his leg drop. So G's won. It was fun, if a little indie I thought this was a, a really good match. A fun match. It was fun. I don't know if I don't know if I would say it was like one of the better matches of the week or anything like that, but it was a fun match. At this point, a fat man named Steve Mack hit the ring. A fat, strong man. A very strong man. He laid out G's in a. Frankly, his I enjoyed his beatdown significantly more than the match. Watching him suplex the fuck out of this little fucker. Great, good times. So then the announcers explained why Steve Mack was so angry at G's. Here's one I have not heard, at least not with this detail. In wrestling before. Steve Mack was upset at G's because G's had been fucking his girlfriend. 
Yeah. Not just fucking her. The announcers explained fucking her without a condom. Yeah. Hey, Mac, you know what happened? Jeez was fucking his girl. No doubt. He got jumped out of the crew because of Without it. a condom. Practice safe sex next time. He was catching oh. feelings. There are times when I do love this show. <laughs> I can't deny. This man's right for a beating. I, I would whip someone's ass, too. This was a segment where there were two conversations going on where I couldn't understand what was going on in either one of them, and they just cut back and forth between them over and over again. This one did legitimately piss me off. Just, I, I don't like not knowing what's happening and, and not understanding anyone. It sucked. The best, the best I got out of this is that one of the conversations, there was a white guy who wanted to join the black guy's crew, and the black guy agreed to start him off light and give me a chance to prove his loyalty. The other one, not a fucking clue. We had Bestia versus Masada. Bestia was, in fact, Bestia 666 from Peros de Mall. By far the best worker on this yes. show. And I, it, right away, when you see an actual an actual professional wrestler on the show, he <laughs> just shines like the brightest star in the sky. Everything he did looked awesome. Just fantastic. He did Lucha with his giant white opponent. Well, not it, everything looked fantastic. And until the finish. Yes. There was, I will, yes, the, there was the finish. The idea was that Bestia would hit a reverse Frankensteiner onto a garbage can lit and pin him. That's what they tried. Uh, I, it's not close to what actually happened. It appeared that both men broke their necks and uh, Bestia made the cover. Up to that point. This is the best thing on the show. Yes. Bestia is good. Bestia is really real good. good. <laughs> yeah, he should be, he should be, uh, like, uh, he should be where Camacho is right now, at least. Bestia and Camacho. I say this after watching the man wrestle one time, but Bestia and Hunico would be a fucking awesome tag team. They would be outstanding. Oh my god, that would rule. Two guys from uh, excuse me, just two guys said that somebody from Atlanta had shorted the money. Then Ruckus and Grim Reefer were counting money in a car. And then these two parties met in the street for a conversation we could not hear because, as you noted, it was in the goddamn street. These uh, meetings in the street were setting up matches that we were seeing throughout the evening. All right. If you say so. Slick Wagner Brown versus Ruckus in the main event. Uncle Murder Screw came out, and uh, I don't know who their honey was, but my God, her ass. She was something else. Even the announcers were like, I will give you $100 to get a close-up of her ass. And then the guy did, so that did. guy's out $100. I hope he got his money. So they were brawling on the floor. Ruckus laid him out and put a chair on him and hit a cartwheel splash. And the announcers uh, said this is going to cost the man his sex life. Their exact words were, no boners. That's what they said. I don't think you have any sex anytime soon tonight. <laughs> anytime soon. With anybody else or so. No boners. Yeah, okay, I like the show. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very love-hate relationship with the Urban Wrestling Federation. I do, too. No boners. So, Rock has just kept doing cartwheels and flippy-doos, and then, like, the 14th one, he did a cartwheel and landed on his feet, and Slick Wagner Brown just clotheslined his head off. Yes. Great spot. Yes. Beautiful spot. So, they kept doing stuff. This is also one of those companies where everyone has to kick out of everything on Earth. Rock has hit a moonsault leg drop. Slick Wagner Brown kicked out. The announcer said he would have to, quote, kill this cocksucker to keep him down. Low Life Louie and Murder One appeared. They were brawling in the ring. Brown won with something that was like a spine buster. Low Life Louie and Murder One brawled out the street, or out into the street, down the street, and then into an alley. (laughs) Suddenly, we don't know where this came from, but there was music playing. Like 1983 synthesizer music. And uh, as they're having this fight in an alley, the show ended. I don't know if it's my pay-per-view provider, but when you say the show ended, what happened was... The screen went dark. No. Oh. That's not what happened. They're they're brawling, and it just... It was on pause. And then there was them thanking a tattoo parlor, and then it just stayed on pause. Presumably forever, because I stopped watching after about 30 seconds. This is how the show ended. The Urban Wrestling Federation. Everybody. It is not for everybody. 
You know what? I said it before. It's an hour long. Yeah. The announcing is hilarious. Yes. There's some good matches on the show. There's some good action. Granted, you won't have any idea what's going on. The production values are miserable. I wouldn't say miserable, but they are. They the are. The audio bad. is the odd. Well, yeah. The the production yeah. of the interviews and the audio is pretty much horrible. Pro- that's a better word. The production is miserable. But you know the uh, the one thing I'll say about kicking out all the finishers, they do kick out of a lot of finishers. But it's not like they're kicking out a finisher for 15 minutes. They kick out a finishers for like two minutes. Okay. And uh, I don't know how much of it's crowd sweetening and how much of it isn't. But it's not like those matches where, you know, the the crowd hits a peak and then they keep kicking out of finishers. And then pretty soon the crowd's dead and they're still kicking out of finishers. At least this is they're kicking out of finishers. Either it's post-produced or, or the fans are into it. The fans keep cheering and cheering and cheering until the finish. So it doesn't bother me nearly as much as it does on some shows. And again, it may be, you know, because it's post-produced, they may put in cheering and that sort of thing. But uh, you have to admit, this was by far the best UWF show. Maybe not the funniest, but uh, as far as, like, a actual show, top to bottom, this was the best one they've done. And uh, it also had the best name of any pay-per-view I've ever heard of. <laughs> Thug Assassins. Thug Assassins! And, as we noted, that turned out to be accurate. Accurate. Because we saw some thugs assassinate a man. That's that's right. Yeah, this show is, you know, it, it's, it is fun at times. <laughs> Most of the time it's fun. Sure. But as television, as a program, it really, <laughs> really sucks. They already got a name for the uh, next one. Yes. Ruthless Revenge. They do got some good names. Okay. Ruthless Revenge. They're not top and thug assassins. It you ne- know what? Actually, I like Street King better. Street King was a good one. <laughs> Street King. <laughs> Street King. Followed by Thug Assassins. And Ruthless Revenge. So I guess uh, Ruthless Revenge, I uh, presumably some some fellas are going to get revenge on some other fellas. Ruthlessly. Ruthlessly. Yeah. Without Ruth. <laughs> yes. Sloppy Joe Sandwich. 